The Youth in Government program began in 1936 under the leadership of Clement A. Duran in Albany, New York. He believed that in order to lead, one must first learn to serve. In 1957, the first Florida YMCA state legislature was held. It was 2009 when the first Treasure Coast delegation traveled to Tallahassee under the leadership of the late Stella Boland, a teacher who started the program at South Fork High School. Now with about 60 students, the Treasure Coast YIG delegation has become one of the largest in the state and continues to grow. We're really happy to be able to have uh, spread this across the, the district this year to all three high schools, but this past year we also included Murray Middle School and we'd really like to explore the expansion into the other middle schools as well. Youth in Government is an initiative of the Florida State Alliance of YMCAs. Of the 19 Ys in Florida, 15 have YIG programs. Some, like the Treasure Coast, are run through the school system with teacher advisors. Students throughout the state spend about six months preparing for the annual state assembly, organized and overseen by Executive Director Samantha Lane, who got her start as a YIG student in 1993. Our students travel from across the state to join us uh, at a centralized point here in Tallahassee where they've been working for the past six or more months on finding a policy-based solution to a community problem. And these students, once they've discovered that solution, are putting that through a model government process. These students are in our legislative program, our executive program, they're members of our Capitol Press Corps, they're serving as directors of legislative affairs within the executive cabinet, and also members of our Supreme Court who are uh, re-looking at, re-examining important issues uh, associated with constitutional law. The students bond as they coach each other, draft laws, practice arguments, research, and strategize. Once they get to the Capitol, the days are long and nerve-wracking. But everybody pulls together, so if one of the team gets a bill passed, an appointment, or an award, it's a victory for the entire team. And we see it, it seems, year after year, as the upperclassmen take the lowerclassmen under their wing and just grow them up to be leaders. Uh, there's no stopping this. There's no stopping it. While YIG has launched many a lawmaker's career, students recognize that the skills they gain will be valuable in any walk of life. Ryan James, for example, he wants to become an engineer. So I'm, I'm learning how to, um, how to do my research before I argue and have better educated arguments. I was chosen as an associate justice, which is one of the judges in the judicial program for this, and I've been chosen to judge for like the Supreme Court. Back when I joined the program, I was just a really shy kid, didn't like talk out that much. I had no idea I'd ever be able to reach this. We've watched our own daughter grow from somebody who could not say two words in front of a group to somebody who can take control of a room in four short years. That's nothing short of amazing. And youth and government has not only taught her that, but also her son, and we've watched other kids in the, in the organization, in the club, grow that way. You know, we have to have the next generation ready to take over. And so the more opportunities we can get them to be able to deliberate respectfully, even when they have different points of view, um, I think it'll serve our community well and really prepare them and train them for future roles. To put that, the need of serving first is crucial to our democracy staying healthy, to thriving, to being able to move forward through the next handful of decades that we know are going to be challenging for us as a country. Um, and we think as the YMCA that we have a responsibility to play a part in developing that next generation of leaders. I want to actually help and put myself out there for people I feel like I have a voice that I speak for the low, like the people that are less fortunate, and I, I, I rather speak for them than anyone else. You put a kid from, from Miami-Dade at the same table as a kid from maybe Plant City or somewhere like that, those two kids grew up very differently. And for them to sit down and talk about legislation and talk about issues uh, is kind of a cool thing to see. The circumstance is definitely what makes it amazing because you'll just be talking to somebody and be like, oh yeah, you guys have the same bill. People that you think you would never talk to, you would never think you would ever speak with them, 
you just meet them in the most random circumstances. So what do you think you have learned since you started with youth and government? How I approach other people. My fellow delegates, the state of Florida is home to a growing number of unaddressed mental, mental illness issues. Senator Kelly Stargell of Lakeland had four kids go through youth and government, and she's a staunch advocate for the program. As deputy majority leader, she seeks out funding so that kids from under-resourced areas are also able to participate. Years ago, I started getting excited about it, and then watching it grow through the program, being able to get the funding, what I like the best about it is that any kid can join the program. And then they get a true picture between having a lobby corps, you have the press corps, you've got the Senate, the House, they got to work the bills. The debate is legitimate debate. I mean, you have different parts of the state. You have different, different ethnicities. It's an it's, it's exciting program. When you get a true picture, it makes you a better advocate, and it really teaches our kids how a bill becomes a law. You know, we've really dropped the ball in some ways, and I'm excited that the YMCA program, which is open to everybody, can continue, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you guys continue. And now the challenge is going to be how to continue to maintain the core of what this program is as you grow, because I want to see a lot of kids get involved, not lose who you are, but that's going to take, that's going to take some figuring it out on you guys' part, so that'll be a challenge. It is, it is, and we, you know, we've, got some, we, you know, we've got some areas of the state that we want to get to and we got some we got some neighborhoods and some some constituents that we want to mm -hmm. we want to reach and really give them the opportunity because that can this is a program that can change right. neighborhood advocacy is not protesting necessarily that right. is a part of it and going out and going to the streets is a part of it but this is really where you can make an impact in making things change and make make positive change for the future you know a lot of these high schools are working with large large budgets a large you know large amounts of money they got for grants um, and you know we've We've had our local Y supporting us, and it's like, you know, every every dollar is precious. But, and I think that's the thing, they, they, the kids don't take this for granted because they have a, an investment in it, the Y has an investment in it, our community has an investment in it, and so they know that we need results, and we are getting it, we are getting it. YIG can have such a profound effect that many continue with the program as advisors and volunteers long after they graduate. Katie Bork, a math teacher in Lakeland, was a student delegate for four years in the early 1990s. Then she became a faculty advisor in 2011. Why? Because she sees how it changes her students' lives for the better. This is the best part. I love being a delegate, but being able to teach my students and guide them and get them and push them and push them and push them and then I get here and I sit in the back and watch them just it, I become overcome watching them overcome their own insecurities and um, it's very satisfying it's very rewarding.